All right, so today I want to just continue uh, in line with what I've shared last week. How many of you were here last week? Amen. Praise God. And we've been talking about the body of Christ and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Pastor, do we need to talk about the Holy Spirit? Absolutely. 100% yes. Why? Why do we? Can we just talk about Jesus? Well, yeah, we talk about Jesus, but we also talk about the Father. And we also talk about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is not lesser than the Father, nor is He lesser than Jesus. He's just as important. Because actually, they are one. They are one. They are one God. We serve one God. We worship one God. But yet, this one God presents Himself as the Father, as the Son, Jesus, and as the Holy Spirit. And they are equally holy, equally powerful, and equally as important in a believer's life. Amen? No, I just want Jesus. If Jesus would be here in front of you today, he would go, Pak. Because he actually said it. I need to go. Because I need to send another helper. Take note. Because Jesus looked at himself as a helper as well. He didn't say, I'm going to send the helper. That he's the only helper. No. I will send another helper. Because whatever Jesus did in his natural body, the Holy Spirit empowered him to do so. Or the Holy Spirit anointed him to do so. Amen? And that's why he, we the church, the body of Christ today, Jesus' body is not here on earth. Jesus' body is in heaven. We are not the body of Jesus. Clear po ba? No, I'm the body of Jesus. No, you're not the body of Jesus. Because Jesus has one body. And it's seated at the right hand of the Father. Tahimik ng church na to, ha? We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christos. We are the body of the Holy Spirit or the anointing. We are the body of Christ. As Jesus was the body of Christ when He walked the earth, He was the only one filled with the Holy Spirit. He is the only one with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. He was the only one with the body of Christ when He walked the earth. But when He left, He made a way. That the body of Christ would not be limited to just His body. But us today, the church, we would also be the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you there? There are three words that I, we, we talked about. In Acts chapter 1, 8, it talked about you shall receive power. And that word power is the word dunamis, which is the power, strength, and ability of the Holy Spirit that is present Amen. The Holy Spirit's present in us. Amen. And it is operating in us. So the Holy Spirit is not just in you. Do you believe the Holy Spirit is in you? Amen. Thank you, church, for responding because I will keep on asking questions. Pastor, hindi ka ba napapagod sa tagtanong? Hindi. Kasi gusto ko maradig ang boses niyo. Amen. Not only is the Holy Spirit present in us, but He is working. Now my question is, are you going to allow Him to work? Because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not force His will. God will never force His will upon us. Do you understand that? He will never force His will, but if we allow Him, He will do His will. In our lives, we have to allow Him to do so. Why? Isn't God sovereign? Exactly. In His sovereignty, God has given you and I free will. God has the ability to do whatever He wants, whenever He wants, whatever He wants. Do you know that? He's all powerful, He's all knowing, He's omniscient. He can do whatever He wants. So, why isn't God just doing whatever He wants? Because He is a sovereign God. And as He has declared over humanity, we have been given the free will to choose. 
And that's why he says, we, in life, we have the right to choose between what's good and what's evil, what's wrong and what's right. Choose good. Amen? And when we choose good, that means we choose God. And when we choose God, then we open the door for His sovereign reign to move in our life. Amen? Many people think sovereignty is He can do. He'll do whatever He wants, whenever He wants. You will get confused that way. Yes, He has the ability, but He has spoken. He has decreed. He has already executed His word. And so God in His sovereignty, in His benevolence, and in His goodness will keep His word. Do you understand that? That's why we can trust God with His promises. Because eh? we know He keeps His word. So we can trust Him with His promises. Amen? Power. But say, since we're Filipino, let's say it the Filipino way. Very good. Power. Number two. The next word we talked about in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, that when the Holy Spirit came upon them with power, they were filled. The word fill is to take full, complete possession of. And that we are not our own. We have been bought with a price. So when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are taking possession. Now, what do we call that? When the power and the infilling, we call that the anointing. Everybody say anointing. And the word anointing is the word creo, which means separated and equipped with necessary power and ability to do or fulfill your destiny. Amen? Anointing means separated and equipped with the necessary power and ability to do or fulfill the destiny, your destiny. Listen, the Spirit within establishes us in our identity. But the Spirit upon the anointing empowers us to fulfill our destiny. Ulitin ko po, ha? This is all review. I shared this all last week. The Spirit within establish us in our identity. We have the Holy Spirit in us. That's why we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are a child of God. And the Holy Spirit within us does that. But it's, God said there's more than just the Spirit within. We need the Spirit upon. Amen? The Spirit upon us empowers us to fulfill our destiny. That's why we need to know that we are empowered to do what God has called us to do. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 22, talking about us, the church. Are you the church? Are we the church? We are the church. Amen? 2 Corinthians 1, 20 to 22 says, For all, all what? In, who is Him? Jesus, amen, is our, sorry, our, and in Him, to the glory of God, amen. Next verse. Now He who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is, amen. So God establishes us. What did we talk about that? Who establishes us? The Holy Spirit. Where? Come on. In us. Because of the Holy Spirit in us, we are established with God. But there's more than just the Holy Spirit within. Amen? Many people say, I just need the Spirit within. I don't need this whole, you know, anointing, anointing, prayer, prayer, feel, feel. <laughs> Baloney. People who think that way, either two things. They, they're ignorant. They don't know. Now, listen. Ignorant doesn't mean mahina sila. Ignorant just means they don't know the truth. Amen? I am ignorant of how to cook certain foods. It doesn't mean wala kong alam. 
It just means certain foods, I just really don't know how to do it. But I can learn. See, the good thing about ignorance can change when you learn. The other one, wala kang magawa, na joke lang. It's either you're ignorant or you are rejecting the truth. Maganda yung ignorance eh, kasi it can be changed. But when you know the truth and you reject the truth, it's like you're rejecting the words of our Lord. Because He Himself told His disciples that we need the empowering, not just the infilling, but the empowering of the Holy Spirit so that we could be the right witness. Amen? Who has sealed us. Sorry, can I go back to verse 21? Now He, talking about God, establishes us with the Holy Spirit and has anointed us. Amen? Amen? Is God, next verse says, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee of what? That the promises, yes, amen. But number two, aside from the promise, that we have the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that we are established in Him. And the Holy Spirit is our guarantee that we are anointed in Him. Amen. Amen. Established and anointed or empowered is the way that God wants you and I to live our life. Why? Because Jesus said in John 14, verses 12 to 17, He's speaking to His disciples, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in Me, Anybody believe in Jesus here? Amen. We're in the right place. He's talking about us. Again, remember when Jesus speaks, He doesn't just speak to the person. He speaks into the generations. Amen. He doesn't just speak to one person. Yes, He's speaking to one person or maybe a group of people, but the Word of God is generational. Amen. So, as yes, this is true to them, and I believe it is true to us today. There's no context that makes me believe that this is not true for us today. Amen? Are you there? Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, is that you? Then this one's for you also. The works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Now, the word greater does not mean better. It talks about a degree or measure. Because now the Holy Spirit is not limited to one man. The Holy Spirit has been given to the body of Christ, which is us. Amen? So our reach would be far more greater than one person. Let's go. And whatever you ask, I like this. this the, the thought continues. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Continue. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He will give you Take note of the word. Another helper that he may abide with you. See, Jesus' time on earth was limited for that season. But we know Jesus, when he ascended, his promise was he will return. And when Jesus returns, it will not be for a limited season only. Hindi to parang tour tour lang. Diba? Yung mga ibang tour dyan. Bibili ka ng ticket. Kahit ibang bansa, bibili ka ng ticket. Galing, no? No, some people are very passionate about these things. And praise be to God for that. Amen? Mas mabuti, passionate ka, kesa para kang bato dyan. Amen? Amen? It's good to be passionate about things. But sana naman for the right things, right? Amen? Amen? It's good to be passionate. Tell the person beside you, am I passionate? Sumagot pa sila. Minsan, sobra. But 
what's the point? He says here, what was I talking about? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Can we go back? Jump back, jump back. Pray the Father, He'll send you another helper. Amen? Because Jesus was that, that, that initial helper at that time. That He may abide with you forever. Now Jesus will come again. And when He comes again, we will be with Him also forever. Amen? And then the verse 17, be The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him and He will dwell with you and be with you. Now what's this mean? It talks about the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in anybody. He will dwell. He has the ability to and He wants to, but only those who are saved can the Holy Spirit dwell and can, amen? Why? Because the Holy Spirit, for to dwell in us, we need the right vessel. And the only time this vessel can receive the Holy Spirit is when the blood of Jesus is applied upon this vessel. And when the blood of Jesus is applied upon this vessel, which is our life, which is our body, we are no longer sinful. We become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not based on our works, but based on His finished work. Amen. Is it clear? So God wants this for you and for me. He was given us the Holy Spirit, yes, to dwell in us, but also to empower us. Say empower. The word empower, again, is talking about anointing. So why? What will the anointing do in our life? Did you ever ask that question? Pastor, you keep talking about it, but what will it do? It will make me fulfill my destiny. How? Yes, we know the Holy Spirit empowers us to fulfill our destiny, but how? Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. This is talking about Saul. It's talking about Saul, who was, or, who was anointed king. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, is, is it not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance? Now, who is his inheritance? It's talking about the children of Israel, the nation of Israel. The Samuel, Samuel comes in the prophetic. He takes oil, which is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And he pours the oil over the head of Saul. And he said, the Lord God is not the Lord or our Heavenly Father, the one who's... See, the oil is a symbol. And I want to encourage you. Symbols are good. But really, it's not the oil that anointed him. It's not the symbol. It's the power of God. Yes, I put oil on you, but the oil did not anoint you. God anointed you. Amen? Let's be clear. So what happened after God anointed him? And of course, they needed a sometimes a representation. That's why we take communion, hindi ba po? Because the communion reminds us. There's, again, can I please say this? It reminds us of what Jesus did. Do this in remembrance of me. The power to heal, the power to change lives, the power to do all this is in God. Is in God. Is in God. It's not in the natural. It's just symbolic. It allows us to remember what God has done. Amen. Amen clear the oil was needed for him to remember what god has done and look what happened in verse 6 after he was anointed then the spirit of the lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and you will be turned into see when the holy spirit anoints us he changes us amen he changes us that's what we need in life. We need the Holy Spirit. 
Because if we look at our lives, and no matter how highly we look at ourselves, and no matter how highly we think of ourselves, there's always a better version. If, we, if you come to the place and you think that I've already reached, that I don't need to improve anymore, then you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Amen? We must always be in a place of humility and surrender and come to a place, especially once you get married <laughs> and once you've been married for a long time, you must always come to a place that you have to <laughs> be humble <laughs> and sometimes admit that maybe you're not right. And that goes for both spouses. Amen? Amen? Humility is part of life. Humility is a gift of God. Humility opens the door for more grace to be poured in our lives. So, brothers and sisters, you never lose by being humble. You lose when you become prideful. Even if you know you're right, even if you are right, you still lose by being prideful. Lang nag amen, no? So tell the person beside you, let's continue to always be humble to one another. Amen? I want God to change me. Ayan, natatawa siya. I want God to change me to be the person that He has created me to be. See, the anointing will not just... Yes, the Spirit within begins that work in us. Our identity, yes. And that's not something we, need, we work on. It's something that God does in our life. But I want God to work on my character. I want God to change certain things in me. I want God to make me more and more like Him. Bible says in Corinthians that when we look at the Word, it's like a mirror, and the mirror reflects that we are changing. It's not a one-time change and everything is done. Read your Bible. It's we are constantly being changed into the image and likeness of Christ. Amen? So my prayer is that every day, God would change me my attitudes, my thoughts, my actions, my words to be more Christ-like. Amen? My spirit is already righteous, but we're not just a spirit. Hindi ka mumu. Amen? You have a body and you have a mind. And, that's, and salvation is not just for your spirit. It's for your body and your mind as well. Can I get an amen to that? All right, so five ways. Five ways how the Holy Spirit will make us a different person. Number one, Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day that the burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. What is yoke? Yoke is anything that binds you to something. A yoke is, uh, is something that binds you to something. Usually, ginagamit yan sa baka o sa kabayo. Na nakad, nakadikit sila sa isa't isa. But we don't have that physical thing on us. But how many of you know there are yokes of bondage in our life? Habitual sin is a yoke of bondage. Offense and unforgiveness is a yoke of bondage. A wrong attitude can be a wrong a yoke of bondage. Wrong thinking can be a yoke of bondage. So when the, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He breaks those things. Yes, in Christ, I am free. I have been set free. Amen? But there are times that's, that these thoughts are still here. Come on, let's be honest. There's times that we have a hard time forgiving and letting go. And let's be honest, there are times that there are sins that so easily ensnares us, keeps ensnaring us. 
And we want to move forward. We want to break free. We want to, Lord, I'm already, I know I've already been set free. What's going on? And that's why we pray that, you know, the Holy Spirit, when He comes upon us, He will remind you of your freedom in Him. Amen? Come on, are you there? He will let you know that I have already set you free and He who the Son sets free is free indeed. But if we're so self-focused or focused on, our, on the world, we can't to miss it. The anointing will break the yoke of bondage. Number two, Leviticus chapter 8, verse 10 to 12 says, Also Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it and consecrated them. He sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times, anointed the altar and its utensils and the laver and its base to consecrate them. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him. Three times we hear the word anointed. Three times we hear the word consecrated. What does the word consecrate mean? It means to be separated, set apart. The anointing of God, when he comes upon you, he sets you apart for what? For His purpose in your life. Amen? Listen, when the anointing of God is upon you, that anointing will separate you. Will, will. So many times we're just so busy. So many times we're just so, ah, what do I do? So many things to do. Yes, You'll never run out of things to do in life. But being busy doesn't mean that you are doing the will of God. Lord, parang there's not enough hours in a day for all that you want me to do. God created the day. Come on, are you here? He created the day. And He knows that we, whatever He has for us, we can do it in that day. So if you feel that you don't have enough hours, maybe you have to look at what you're doing. And maybe ask God, am I doing too much? Or maybe I should focus on what He really wants me to do. The anointing of God will lead you into that consecration or separation for His good work. Amen? Number three, 1 John 2.27 but the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. And do not need for anyone to teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, will, you will abide in Him. The anointing not only separates you for the will of God, the anointing doesn't only free you to do the will of God. The first one, He frees us to do the will of God, and then He separates us to do the will of God, the anointing will also teach you, tell you, what is it that you need to do? Amen? You're not going to get it from your neighbor. You're not going to get it from your spouse or from your sweetheart. The will of God cannot be found in a person. The will of God can be found in Him only. Amen? And that's why we need Him. Because He will teach us, especially with regards. So now that you have been separated, you have been freed, you have been separated, you have been taught or directed. Acts chapter 10, 38, how God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth and the Holy Spirit and with power, with ability. The Holy Spirit will, as He empowered Jesus, will empower you to fulfill His will. Because when He shows you His will, it means that we're like, ah, Lord, di ko yata kaya yan. Talaga, hindi mo kaya. And that's why you need Him. He sets you free. He, he puts, sets you apart. He lets you know where to go. And then He empowers you. And finally, Psalm 23, 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy and you anoint my head with oil, talking about anointing, my cup runs over. The anointing, anointing brings us to the overflow. See, because we're never going to minister to others 
if we're just full. The only way we can minister to others is, is from the place of overflow. He sets us free. He separates us. He teaches us. He empowers us. And He causes us to overflow. Why? Why? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also in Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, slaves or free, and all have been made to drink into one Spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Amen? Who is this body? I think verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. We are the body. Many members. Anong members? When it talks about members, it's talking about organ parts, skin, hair, teeth, lungs, blood vessels, kidney. Each one of these parts of our body, they serve a purpose. They're unique. They have a different role. They look different. Oxygenated blood looks different than unoxygenated blood. Diba blood pa rin yan? One brings oxygen to the body parts. The other brings carbon dioxide or an empty vessel back to the lungs to be filled again. Each one different. Each one unique. But each one as important as the next. There's not one part greater in value than another part. Because when one part hurts, the whole body hurts. Amen? So what is God saying? That we all have a part to play in this body. You and I, we all have a part to play. Now, are we going to be an active part of this body? Or are we going to be a passive part? of this body. That's not up to God. That's up to you. Do you desire to be an active part of the body of Christ? Then if we want that, then we need the anointing. See, I want to share this with you. This is not my words. This is Christine Kane's word. I will share I will give her the credit today. Next time I say it, it's no longer. But she said this. Many gifted people in the world. So many gifted people. A gift can fill a room. Just watch the concerts. Very talented singers. Puno ng tao. Punung puno ng tao. Filled. Kasi ang galing eh. Galing kumanta. Ang galing mag-perform, ang galing magsulat ng kanta. Gifted yung looks, katulad nyo. But only the anointing can change lives. A gift cannot change a person's life. Someone else's life. It's only the anointing of God that can change lives. And we are not in the business of filling rooms. So much. Space by here. Do I want it filled? Absolutely. But my purpose is not to fill the room. My purpose is to allow the Holy Spirit through the Word and through His ministry to change lives. That's what we're after. 
That's our goal. But it's not just me. Every member does its part. So are we just going to be a passive member and watch a few do their part? Or are you going to finally say, I'm tired of being a bystander and I want to be an active part of the body. Now, what part you play, that's up to God. That's not up to me. That's up to God. How do I know? The anointing will teach you. So how do I do it? Well, the first step is humility. It's saying, I don't know it all. I don't have it all. I know there's more. And I need more. 